One of the most common lies we often buy into is the notion that we have to feel a particular way in order to take action. That we must feel motivated, inspired, energetic, or generally in good spirits to execute upon our goals and commitments. How many times have you intended to do something only to find that when the time came to do it, your feelings presented you with a roadblock? How many times has your attitude, your mood, your desires or cravings presented resistance which has held you back from accomplishing what you know you must? I'm willing to wager that this, above all else, is the most persistent form of self-sabotage that you subject yourself to. You allow your feelings to dictate what you do. You subordinate right action to the whims of your ever-changing moods. You can't achieve consistency because your inconsistent feelings are driving your actions. What you need is better leadership, a changing of the guard. You need a new and more trustworthy captain to steer the ship of your body and your soul. The good news is that the leadership you need already exists. You don't have to go out of your way to find it. It's in you, right now. If you listen close, you can hear it. Your manic emotions will often drown it out. But it's there. It's always speaking to you. It's your better self. The part of you that knows when you're not doing what you ought to. The part that convicts you. The part that brought you here the part that's resonating with what I'm saying right now. It wants good for you. Not good feelings, but good outcomes. You know all too well that good feelings are fleeting things. Here one moment and quickly gone the next. You also know that when you attempt to do something which is actually good for you, good feelings typically don't accompany the initial effort. They come later, after you've performed the hard work. Your better self isn't interested in you feeling good at least not in the near term. It's concerned with ensuring that you are good to yourself, to others, and to the future which will ultimately result from the decisions you make right now. But to do its job, your better self must take command. So how do we make that happen? Before answering this question, I need to disabuse you of one very false notion, namely, that the process of altering your internal command structure will be easy or quick. It won't be. Count on it. Your feelings have been steering the ship for a very long time and they won't give up the captain's seat easily. You will struggle. You will be inconsistent. You will fall back into old patterns. Don't expect otherwise and don't allow this inevitability to shake your resolve to grow and to change. You won't do this perfectly. But perfection isn't the goal. Progress is. Now to dethrone the part of you bent on self-sabotage, you'll first need to become aware of how and when it exerts command influence over your life. You do this in two ways. By paying attention and creating distance. Attention is one of your most crucial weapons in the fight against your shifting moods. Yet it's often neglected. Intuitively, you believe you should be doing something, not navel-gazing. So you skip this part and try to force a solution via other means. But it never works. Time and time again, you find yourself right back where you began. Scratching your head and wondering why your erratic emotions have thwarted yet another attempt to make genuine change. The reality is, you can't address a problem until you've first identified it. And that's what attention does. It identifies when and in what ways your feelings override your reason and guide you down self-destructive paths. To stop your feelings from dictating your actions, you need to catch them in the act. You need to notice when your feelings are taking hold, because it's in noticing your feelings that you'll begin to create the crucial space needed to maneuver through and around them. Let me be very clear on this point. Every time you've allowed your emotions to steer your life in a bad direction, it was because you weren't paying attention. You were so fused with how you felt that you were blind to what the feeling was doing to you and where it was taking you. If you want to make meaningful progress in addressing self-sabotage, 
You must learn to notice when your feelings have begun to undermine the interests of your better self. To do this, you'll require training, a lot of it. The best way to get that training is through mindfulness. Mindfulness isn't an exercise in spiritual awakening. It's a tool, a method for training your conscious self to turn off autopilot and reconnect with what's happening right now. If you can train yourself to observe what your mind, body, and emotions are doing in response to the circumstances of the moment, you'll be better equipped to recognize when your emotions are reaching for the control levers of your life. By catching your emotions in the act of dictating your actions or reactions, you'll position yourself to take the next crucial step in resting back control, creating psychological distance. To act in opposition to a strong feeling or impulse, you must first disassociate from it. This disassociation is what we'll call distance. It's the space created when you differentiate what you feel from who you are. When you experience a powerful impulse like anger, depression, or anxiety, it's common to identify with it. You say, I'm angry, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, you're not trained to notice the inherent distinction between the experience and the one experiencing it. You don't realize that to feel something is not the same thing as being what you feel. Why is this distinction important? Because once you become aware of the fact that you are not what you feel, you'll soon recognize that the real you has autonomy to act regardless of how good or bad you're feeling you'll realize that anger, depression, and anxiety don't need to get a vote. They don't have to dictate what you do. You can move despite them. This is what distance affords you. The space to acknowledge the reality of what you're feeling without identifying with it. You've done this before, perhaps many times without knowing it. To get along in life, you'll need to have regulated your emotions to at least some degree. Have you gone to work when you didn't feel like it? Have you held your tongue when you wanted to lash out? If so, you'll have shown that you can, when necessary, deny your impulses to make a more effective decision in the moment. The trick is to do this more intentionally and with greater frequency. Fortunately, I have an exercise designed to help you do just that. If you practice this technique regularly, you'll find that, over time, you'll become far more attuned to what you're thinking and feeling, which in turn will afford you more opportunities to establish psychological distance and reassert command over the part of you prone to self-sabotage. Most of all, the exercise I'm going to share with you will lay the foundation for the development of life's most crucial skill, self-discipline. To begin, I want you to take a deep breath. As you make a slow exhale, tune into your body and its sensations. Feel the support under you, the texture of the surface on your skin, the temperature of the room. If there is soreness in your body, notice it. If you feel relaxed, notice that too. Now take another deep breath. On a long exhale, focus in on the various sounds which surround you. Notice at least five of them. Look for sounds close to you and sounds at a distance. Whatever these sounds are, don't label or judge them. Just notice that they're there. Take one more breath and on the exhale, open your eyes and try to notice the details of your environment. Try to make yourself as present as possible. Get out of your thoughts and get as focused as you can on what you can see around you. Notice small details which you hadn't noticed before. Focus your vision and try to see these things as clearly as you can. In just the span of three breaths, you're already more attuned to the present moment. You're turning off autopilot and connecting with the world around you. This is a good start. You're aware now and primed for your next objective. To develop the skill of creating psychological distance. To do this, I'll need you to connect with an unpleasant emotion. 
If you're already feeling stressed, angry, or anxious, that's good. In fact, I recommend that you use this exercise to create distance from difficult emotions, which arise naturally throughout your day. Once you've identified or recalled a challenging emotion, I want you to examine it. Without judgment of any kind, simply notice the feeling. What's its intensity? Where do you feel it in your body? Is the sensation steady or does it fluctuate? By putting what you feel under a microscope, you automatically disassociate yourself from it. In doing this, the distinction between the emotion and the one experiencing it becomes sharper. Instead of identifying with what you feel, you become the space in which it happens, much like the sky during a storm. No matter how fiercely the storm rages, the sky is not the storm, nor is it harmed by it. The sky is simply the space in which the storm happens. We know this because when the storm has passed, the sky is still there. And so it is with you. No matter how intense the emotions you're experiencing happen to be, when they've passed, you'll still be there. Emotions may occur within you, but they are not you. It is this separation which affords you the chance to make independent moves regardless of what you feel. And that is exactly what I want you to do now. Leveraging the psychological distance you've created, I want you to make a decision. One which results in some action that is aligned with your deepest values and with your very best interest. It doesn't have to be monumental and it doesn't need to be complex. It just needs to meet the criteria I've mentioned. Perhaps this means stepping outside for some fresh air, cleaning up your personal space, getting a workout in, or reaching out to a loved one. Whatever it is, do it. The exercise I've laid out for you isn't difficult or time intensive. It's intended to be short and practical, something you can implement virtually any time and in any place. When used properly and with enough consistency, it will provide you with a much needed edge in dealing with difficult emotions. More importantly, it will provide you with the space to make small productive moves with greater consistency. Moves which, if performed over time, will have a compounding effect on your life, an effect which will radically transform your present circumstances. This is your primary goal. This is why you train. To develop a system for making small, values-oriented moves each and every time you encounter a difficult emotion. If you can do this consistently, those small, seemingly insignificant moves will be as cobblestones along your current path, providing sure footing and collectively paving the way to a better and more fruitful life. A life you can scarcely dream of. A life you could never achieve if your unexamined emotions were left to sabotage your future. So stay focused and be diligent in your training. No matter what you feel, no matter how much you falter, never give up and always press forward. If you're determined and if you're attentive, better times and better results are sure to follow. And that's what I want. I want better for you. So if you want the same, and if you're ready, Let's go to work.